Welcome back to part two of Erev Rosh Hashanah. This is also the eve of Tishri 1, which is a Rosh Kadesh. And this is a 30-day month that we're about to enter. And Tishri is, is a Hebrew month. This is also the eve of Yom Teruah. Now, the central observance of Rosh Hashanah is the sounding of the shofar, the ram's horn, on both days of the holiday, except if the first day is Shabbat. So we're doing this on the eve, actually, um, um, it, in which case we blow the shofar only on the second day. So we're going to do this actually tonight on the eve and not do that t tomorrow um, for the for, for the hundred blasts. The first 30 blasts of the shofar are blown following the Torah reading generally during morning services and as Many as 70 additionals are blown during and immediately after the Musaf service, adding up to 100 blasts over the course of the Rosh Hashanah morning services. Um, the shofar blowing contains a series of three types of blasts. A tekiah, which is a long sob-like blast, and a shevarim, which is a series of three short wails, and a teruah, at least nine piercing staccato burst. Well, my playing is not that good. So you're not going to probably be able to decipher that out of my playing. But I will play uh, my rendition of the 100 blasts. Um, it's the best that I could do. As, as I mentioned um, in part one, I am not a trumpet player. So no, I would not be an expert uh a shofar player and my uh ram's horn is 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 uh, quite small actually and um, why do we blow the shofar so many times on rosh hashanah the blowing of the shofar represents the trumpet blast that is sounded at a king's coronation so now think about the king and think about um the coming of the king king yeshua we want to announce his coming it's, a, it's plaintive cry also serves as a call to repentance. The shofar itself recalls the binding of Isaac, an event that occurred on Rosh Hashanah also, in which a ram took Isaac's place as an offering to God. Now, of course, I don't have somebody, you know, on my little audio, which I'm about, I'm going to play. Um, I don't have anybody calling out the takia, the roa, you know, the shavarim or any of that stuff. Um, it's just, I'm playing the shofar. So um, there are three different customs as to how many times the shofar is blown on Rosh Hashanah. In most communities, the shofar is blown 100 times. The Torah tells us to blow a teruah from a shofar on Rosh Hashanah. A teruah is a broken sounded blast which resembles a cry. This commandment is repeated in three different places. The Torah requires us to blow nine blasts as follows. Tekia, teruah, tekia. Tekia, teruah, tekia. Tekia, teruah, tekia. Now, if we go deeper, um, teruah can have multiple meanings. Um, the Talmud actually says that uh, there are three possibilities, and it can mean several extremely short blasts, similar to how one would uulate in a tragic situation, um, or it can mean three somewhat longer blasts, similar to how one would moan when he has great worries. A third possibility is that the teruah, the Torah mentions, is both of these cries together, a moan followed by an by an uulation. Today, the moan-like sound is known as shavarim. And the ululation as teruah. To make sure that we cover all bases, we blow all the different possible teruahs with a tekiah before and after each one in the following order. Tekiah, uh, the moon ululation, which is known as the shevarim, and tekiah. Um, and that is done three times, like the tekiah, the shevarim, the tekiah, tekiah, shevarim, tekiah. And this is done 30, 30 blasts. And by blowing these 30 blasts, we fulfill our scriptural obligation. And to understand the reason for the next 60 blasts, we need a little background information. 
um, of the Musaf Amida. I'm sorry, I can't speak tonight. Jeez, what a day <laughs> of Rosh Hashanah. Um, God says to us in Rosh Hashanah, say before me, um, sovereignty um, versus whose themes are sovereignty, remembrances, and shofar. Sovereignty so that you should crown me king over you. Remembrances so that I should remember you for good. And with what? With a shofar. So the Musaf Amidah includes one blessing about God's sovereignty, another about how he remembers his creation, and a third about the power of the call of the shofar. And then there are 10 blasts of the shofar um, with the takia, the shavarim, the takia, uh, and, and so forth and so forth and so on. And the shofar is blown 30 times during the Musaf Amidah. When the Kazan repeats the Amidah, he repeats these three blessings about sovereignty, remembrance, and shofar. And the shofar is blown after each one in the same order. So in hearing this, we've accounted for 90 blasts, 30 before the Amidah, 30 during the silent Amidah, and 30 during the Kazan's repetition of the Amidah. It is customary to blow yet another 10 blasts after the repetition of the Amidah for a total of 100 blasts. So that's, in, that's how it's done in, in some of the synagogues. The blowing of the shofar represents the trumpet blast that is sounded at a king's coronation. So we, we need to think about the king here. Um, so we say Lashana Toba, too, for Rosh Hashanah. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. And before we go any further, I think what we're going to do is play that shofar blast. Since we're not going to do it tomorrow, since since uh, Shabbat services are on uh, Rosh Hashanah, the actual Rosh Hashanah is during the day of Shabbat. So we are not going to do it on the day of Shabbat. So I'm going to do it tonight. and We'll do our hundred blast tonight. And I made this audio, so I'm going to play it from the audio because I'm not blowing it tonight. <laughs> you know, this was already pre-recorded for for this purpose. So here we go.
Well, there you go. <laughs> I am not a shofar expert, that's for sure. I think I ran out of hair towards the end. But, um, well, praise the Lord. There's some shofar playing for Ara Rosh Hashanah. And for those that are experts at playing the trumpet or being in the brass, uh, in the brass section of the band, whether you're a tuba player, a trombone player, a French horn player, a a trumpet player, uh, you can, you're probably laughing at my rendition of shofar playing because I know that you could certainly do a much better job than, than what I did. But um, because again, because of copyrights, um, I did my own rendition and the best that I could. And, and shockingly, I actually got a sound out of it. I have had this little Rams horn so far for quite a few years. I uh, could not get a sound from it and just um, decided to pull it out of its bag and give it a try uh, because I was thinking about Rosh Hashanah. And lo and behold, I got some noise out of it and I decided Okay, well, I'm going to try my own hundred blast. So there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, original sound. <laughs> I know it sounds like pretty pretty much sounds like a a wounded calf, but um, that's the best that I could do. Now playing a flute, that's a whole different ball game. Um, but anyway, um, there is the hundred blast. So we're going to move forward um, with tonight's um, readings. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, before I get into anything, any further teaching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it and come back for a part three. <laughs> 